Okay. Okay, I think we are at live finally for FPL Game Week 30 and our preview from the FPL script. I'm your co-host Fran or FPL underscore underscore Fran uh, with my co-host here at Schadenfreudist with a one. Today we'll just be discussing Game Week 30. As, as we said, you know, we reviewed Game Week 29 in our previous episode and, and we discussed a lot of sort of scene review type elements uh, there. So if you're interested in that sort of discussion, feel free to sort of step back one episode, have a look at Season 2, Episode 31. This is obviously 32 and we're just purely discussing short, the short term as well as the sort of medium to long term in terms of expected minutes. Uh, just because, of course, I think this week is an interesting week for, for most managers where, you know, regardless of whether you're wild carding or let's say planning for um, the short to medium term. So there are some managers, obviously, who are gearing towards, let's say, a wild card 35 type of path. Some managers have, of course, recently wild carded um, and maybe don't have a free hit or maybe still have a free hit remaining. So. Ultimately, the, the I think the, the, the landscape is quite interesting in that a lot of the defenders still have some X-Men's uncertainties that are worth discussing. And then, of course, we've got Darwin and Kunha, who are your sort of short-term forward picks who a lot of people want to discuss. So I think the first option would be to discuss defenders, first of all. Um, and I think the, the sort of defenders of choice in terms of dicey X-Men's, you know, uh, so to speak, are Bradley and Gusto. So do you want to just quickly jump onto that? These, these are defenders who are, I think pivotal to a lot of t people who are trying to build towards a larger bench boost because at least in the short term you have a defender who allows you to build what, what should be a good gaming 34 team or you know particularly with gusto of course you know someone who can actually be very useful long term in gaming 37 whereas bradley i, I see more as a, a short-term pick and and someone that you might have to transfer out sooner than later yeah hi everyone so as fran already pointed out um the game week review for game week 29 and everything can be found in our previous episode. So for uh, for Bradley, I just wanted to confirm one thing. I saw mm -hmm. another update about Trent. Uh, yeah. Can you recall what that update was? Yeah, so, so the update is that apparently Trent is looking to come back for the Atalanta game, which means actually yeah. the next three Premier League fixtures will be, in theory, games that he would miss if you're going to follow that timeline. Okay, so if you look at that, I would go for... So right now I have Bradley's minutes while solving at something around uh, 78, 75, 73. Mm -hmm. They could in theory be higher because if we are sure that he is unlikely to come back or Trent is that is, is unlikely to come back before the Atalanta game, then uh, the only real alternative you're looking at is uh, something like Gomez playing right back and then Simikas playing left back, uh, which hasn't happened an awful lot this season so i don't know if, if that's likely given that bradley has been playing well mm -hmm. so uh similar to gusto but for short term obviously whereas with gusto i just think that he's been probably their best defender this season and for his minutes i would just go for something around the range of let's say 84 82 81 and then a very slow decay i would say uh, th there will be some decay because uh, the number of chelsea options that you expect to come back should uh, technically influence some of his exponents, but that should not influence uh, the decision of whether you want to buy him this week. Because I just think if you want a Chelsea defender for all the way up till 37, I think he's one of the best options. Mm. Now, Rizazi and he's quite a lot more expensive, right, compared to Gusto, which we uh, discussed last week. Yeah, I think Rizazi might be 4.6 or something like that. Okay. Uh, I might be wrong on that. Um, yeah, but to be honest, they don't obviously have a lot of center back depth as well. So yeah, it's a fair point that obviously Desasi is a good point of comparison. What I will say though, to play devil's advocate, is I do think Bradley's minutes have been a, a bit subpar recently. I remember, for example, in the city game, he was subbed off for of 50, 59 minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then obviously I think was it the Luton game as well that he played sixty seven minutes. So you could argue, let's say, even if Trent's out, that maybe Bradley will play more than sixty minutes, which I think is fair. But then. You probably can't push too far in terms of the minutes because Joe Gomez has been playing well this season. And it seems yeah. like Robertson is fine. So the news on him is that I, I think it's only going to be a few days in terms of mm. how, how that knock impacts him. So you could very well see Robertson come back in the Sheffield United game, which obviously you'd like it less, right? If you're if you're investing into Bradley and, and, and you think Robertson is going to have some sort of knock on impacts in terms of Bradley minutes in the sense that Joe Gomez is, is, is maybe more likely to maybe potentially sub off for Bradley um, in that Sheffield United fixture, then, you know, there, there is a case for that as well. 
Yeah, fair enough. I, I just looked into the Aussie's price, so it's 4.9. Oh, 4.9, yeah, uh, same wars. Yeah. Okay, that's so actually that's, a that's... huge gulf, to be honest. Exactly, yeah. 0.7 yeah. million is quite a uh, significant amount, so I just think Gusto is probably one of those decisions where it's very unlikely to backfire. Mm. Uh, compared yeah, to someone I, I like agree with that. that. Yeah, because Gusto, Gusto feels like a pick that it could it could pay even more dividends as a, and, and it has a pretty good base baseline whereas bradley i think is is a bit of both like the base can be low because you can expect bradley to get subbed off at 59 i don't think it's crazy um yeah. because you're playing a lot of fixtures in the short term in liverpool uh he's a young kid and club's aware of that and i think this season you've seen a little bit more rotation at least at the back mostly because of course joe gomez has shown that he's been very competent whenever he's come on the season so that and also Simikas getting a, a bit more minutes even even whilst robertson's coming back is is a small threat, I would say. Well, what's nice about Bradley, though, in contrast to Gusto, I think, is that a lot of people do have a really bad defense on Gaming 31, as well as Gaming 30. Now, obviously, a lot of us do have double Arsenal defense, so that's very good for Gaming 31. Um, but maybe, actually, let's say, unless you have Zabarnyi, I guess you, you'd probably also struggle to have a, a pretty competent defense on Gaming 31. And then, obviously, in Gaming 30, same issue there, where which is why, obviously, we're looking at defender transfers. Uh, I myself in, am probably in a bit of a worse state than most managers, if if I'm being honest, because I've got um, Sinesi, who unfortunately now probably won't feature versus uh, Everton, Crystal Palace, and Luton, which are basically three fixtures that I would have considered playing him in. And I've got Doughty, who's the, the fit one out of the two, and he's pretty useless in the short term. Did, so Did you say Luton? I don't think that's possible. Um, does he not because play? I, uh, I thought both their fixtures were done with Luton. Or was I was I looking at something? maybe I'm wrong. Um, no, no, they do play Luton. Yeah, they do play oh, Luton. Sorry, my bad. No, that's alright. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. Um, but yeah, so that's sort of the landscape, right? And that's that's something to to sort of think about for me because I I feel like I have to go a little bit deeper into defenders. But at the same time, as someone who's navigating without a sort of chip on thirty four, um, it makes more sense for me to invest into defenders that have that sort of bench boost thirty seven impact. You know, even if there's a small chance of it. Let's say Gusto, as I said is a good example of someone who could pay off quite well for me if he, let's say, manages to stay fit and Reese James, um, you know, still sort of is trailing with his recovery. And another thing too is like, not 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 even just for bench was 37, but even for the doubles in the short term for, let's say, 35, 36 for Chelsea, mm -hmm. if I can get something out of Gusto there, you know, the, the, the better. And I think one thing to, to mention about Gusto too is that he kind of has, I think he's a slight availability tax on review um, due to the sort of illness. And then also you can see that he has very aggressive decay, which I, I think is unfair considering how long, in my opinion, it would take Reese James to come back to full fitness and to really take away serious minutes from Gusto. So I think he's been a bit unfairly decayed. So I think if you're someone who's adjusting your minutes, do have a look into that. Whereas with Connor Bradley, you've got a similar rate to decay, but I think it's totally fair because we do expect Trent to come back, um, particularly before gaming 34. So yeah, that's and, the game. And the point you mentioned about his uh, minute ceiling is very important. Mm, yeah. And I think that's why subconsciously I probably had 80 minutes as sort of like the upper bound. Which I think is I, fair. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Where I was thinking, where, okay, I can't allow his minutes to cross uh, the 80 minute threshold. Fair. Which makes sense now that we've discussed um, how we've arrived at that sort of, uh, those sort of numbers. So I, I was also looking at maybe some other players that are popular, let's say someone like Isaac, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are looking at uh, buying Isaac this week uh, in preparation for, let's say, Newcastle's fixtures and also 37. the double in 37, yeah. which is, I, I hesitate to even mention that because uh, it's so far away, so far away yeah. right now. And with Isaac's injury record not being the best, I, I wonder if that's the the optimal strategy but i guess do we, do we know when wilson like, comes back um yeah, see, mm. i checked this before we started streaming and it was a very vague update yeah. from Eddie Howe. so i don't mm -hmm. even know if he's going to come back by the end of this season and, yeah. and you know what even if Eddie Howe had given us a date or a line in the sand we can't take it as gospel anyway yeah so i just i don't know how how uh, aggressively are you decaying his minutes because i suspect he it, is one of should be one of the candidates uh, in the forward positions for you, right? Um, less so because obviously I, I I have to sort of navigate gaming thirty four first, so he's not really an option for me because I I feel like Isaac is in that Darwin camp um for me, like in, in terms of that that sort of price um so for me Darwin's pretty clear of Isaac um 
and, and that obviously depends on your interpretation of Darwin's minutes. Um, maybe I have him wrong, but I think both of them have pretty pretty aggressive decay, to be honest. Um, and I think it's fair to sort of place that sort of level of decay on, on those two players. But obviously, because of Gaming 34 being something that I have to navigate myself, um, yeah, Darwin takes a lot of priority over me compared to Isaac, who of course is a lot better this week. Um, so I'll be going Isaac in the uh, FPL challenge, <laughs> but not not an FPL for sure. Um, nice, yeah. nice. Uh, so okay, so that's uh, that's the first fixture. Do uh, do you uh, have you thought of any other assets where you feel like okay, the X wins on the review might not be mm. the fairest or they are not the most accurate, and you have been changing them every single week or maybe every single day for the past couple of days? Recently, maybe. I would still say Ait Nuri, but I think one of the things with, I don't think he, it's, it's not necessarily a case of mins, but I think it's a case of he is someone who I think has clear, like, out of position sort of yeah. potential right now. <laughs> and he's, his average X mins are like only 82. And I think he's become like a crucial player for this team. But it, it could also be very short term, like, in the sense that if, let's say, Huang comes back, you, you could very well see. Wang Kun has Rabia up top and gaming 34. So, you know, is Ait Nuri that good? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think you could raise his X-Men's up in the short term. He is just the only option that I've thought about. Someone in the chat has mentioned our thoughts on City Defenders. Actually, LaSalle's is probably one that I think I've docked up a bit, um, I will say. But l not not for myself, just for people, just just to suggest wildcards for people. Yeah. Because LaSalle's is um, someone that we expect to play a lot of minutes. Because the last time we saw Botman out, we just practically saw LaSalle's play every game with Shar. So yeah. I think and, LaSalle's and is an amazing pick at 3.9. Absolutely. I was one of those who was thinking that, okay, Burn might take away some of his minutes, and mm -hmm. that never happened. Yeah, we, we thought also, that previously. And I think, you know, yes. th this time it's like you've got the chance to sort of learn from not even your mistakes, but just like what what, what we've seen already. And I think LaSalle's right? played yeah, very yeah. competently um, during that yes. run of games. And it yeah. seems like, I think generally speaking, like from... From watching how it's like he, I think it's very clear that he does think that the the the, the team defensively is a little bit imbalanced when you play Livermento Trippier. So if there's ever a chance he gets to play Burn Trippier, I think he always prefers that. Yes. Um, and also the, the forward depth is still really poor. So we've seen Livermento play up top. So yeah, I think Lascelles is perfect. Um, he's probably the only player I'd say from a defensive position that I would say has has weird X mins that you could maybe capitalize on. Whether that allows you to you know optimize a wild card, I don't know, but. He's at 3.9 million. I, I I imagine that he would be thrown into most people's wild cards, uh, particularly if you're playing something like 3 at 34. Um, in, in the midfield, I think the only... Uh, maybe we can go the other direction. I think Richarlison obviously has a knee issue. So he's yes. definitely someone that people need to start excluding, potentially, just because I think the, the way Richarlison would have worked as a punt, as a pick recently, at least, would have been maybe a, a little bit of a punt. And also, if let's say you were confident in his performance in gaming 30, that you'd suddenly start to look at him as an option that you can keep in the short term up until gaming 34. Or, of course, if you're free at, a, uh, free at 34, even better, right? Um, but yeah, he's, he's obviously someone that we need to have a look at. Um, otherwise, I think... Do you want to discuss Sarabia minutes? Yeah, exactly. I, yeah, I, I had pulled up Sarabia's minutes on review right now, and mm -hmm. just for anyone who's listening on podcast, his minutes for let's say the next five weeks are 83, 80, 79, 78, and 74. Yep. And they sort of stay at uh, the plateau around 74 to 70. So I guess uh, with uh, with the imminent uh, return of Kuna and uh, Wang, mm -hmm. do you see any immediate impact, or do you think we should? Uh, buff his minutes or nerf his minutes like, what are your thoughts on that I probably think you you want to buff his minutes up until like around 34 and then you want to have slightly more aggressive decay yeah. around there because yeah. I, I feel like yeah. the, the the well there's already been two fixtures where they've played Ped, Pedro Neto less um, and he's played 90 minutes in both games so yeah. I, I feel like it's almost impossible that he plays anything less than 82 minutes. That's my opinion. Um, yeah, makes sense. So something like you would say, maybe 83, 82, 81, 80. And yeah, then or, yeah maybe, maybe you could even go higher if you want. Be. And then yeah. I would go really aggressive. Yeah. Not really aggressive just because, I mean, it's just because obviously when, when you apply the sort of decay factor naturally, of course, it's gonna you're going to have to sort of anticipate, let's say, a, a pretty big drop like, 
it would probably only be a drop in, let's say, 10 to 15 minutes in, in real time. But then obviously with the decay around seven, eight game weeks down the line. Um, yeah, I mean, sorry, around maybe five, six game weeks down the line. Yeah, Bloody it would be pretty aggressive. What do you think about Garnacho? actually? I'm curious because for me, Sarabia and Garnacho are very similar picks in the sense that they are the only two picks in the game that allow people to squeeze like a Sala um, in at a, re- a very ridiculous and sort of favorable price point in the midfield position. And one's 4.9 in Garnacho, one's 4.7 in Sarabia. You could technically interpret that Garnacho is amazing, like Sarabia in, after. I mean, even even at gaming thirty four. So let's say you want to you want to ignore Sarabia because maybe you you're planning more so for gaming thirty seven. Um, and I know I've already run solves. I I, I run maybe a, a little bit of like a zero point six EV loss up until the end of the season if I go Garnacho over Sarabia, which I think is actually worthwhile because you also have to take into account that Garnacho is probably going to be. Um, a little bit more of a, a popular pick. When I run, for example, Souls with higher decay and, and I take into account my bench boost, Garnacho is obviously a better transfer for me. So where do you sit in terms of like his position within the team um, at United, obviously with Hoyland back and also I guess maybe Diallo also playing well uh, coming off the bench and things like that? Yeah. So first of all, okay, let's start with Diallo. Uh, forget about the Liverpool game because that's yeah, yeah. a one-off and it's a cup game. Mm-hmm. But... And I know a lot of people will be influenced by that because it is one, like a recent event. But yeah. if you look at the overall season, Diallo has been nowhere close to competing for any of the starting positions. If anything, I would say that there would be a case where Anthony could start one of the games because he has always been Tenag's sort of favorite right wing player to play mm-hmm. until Tenag stumbled onto Garnacho on right wing. Let's be honest, it, it's a very serendipitous turn of events that has led to Garnacho being a uh, right winger and he's been so good there. But I, I think one it's thing... another thing too is how bad Rashford was in because technically Garnacho was yeah. almost replacing Rashford until yes. a point where he yes. was also replacing Anthony. Yeah, um, in, you're absolutely yeah. right. So that's what I was coming to, which is that uh, the the problem with, let's say, reducing Garnacho's minutes is, let's say you are confident that Anthony takes up the right wing spot in one of the games. It could easily happen that Hoyland misses out Rashford up front, Garnacho on the left. If Gar- Rashford misses out Garnacho on the left, Hoyland up top. Mm-hmm. So I just think that this season, especially Garnacho's minutes out of all the attackers have to be the highest yeah. from uh, United squad. So if anything, so I'm looking at his minutes right now on the review and they're 85, 82, 80, 78 for the next I, four I, weeks. I think they look fair. I would maybe may even increase them a minute mm-hmm. or two. He has been early subbed a little bit more though, right? Because yeah. of he Anthony. Has been, but- that's what I'm saying. So yeah. even if you look at his early subs, I don't think they have been uh, like, let's say, 75 or earlier than that. No, no, no. always or, 80 yeah. plus. Yeah. yeah, 80, 80 plus. So all I'm trying to say is even if he's going to be subbed, there is no chance it's an early sub, like a 60, 65 minutes up. Also, because I just think that Tenak doesn't believe it. Oh, I think we might have lost a little shot for us there. What do you what do you what do you guys think Ten Hag doesn't believe in? Yeah, sorry. No, that's right. We've got you yeah, back. back. <laughs> we I was just gonna start guessing. Um but yeah, go on. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, okay, it stopped there. That... Oh that's, that's very interesting. So I was gonna say that. Okay. I, th- I think <laughs> I think my... I think we're losing you again. Um... I, I think I'm gonna stop talking for a couple of minutes. Uh, you can you can uh t- discuss something. No, nah, that's all right. I mean, I'm in agreement with you on Garnacho, which is also why I think, I think, for me, as someone who probably has to squeeze in a Garnacho or Sarabia type player very, very shortly within, you know, my transfers and also to navigate the the sort of 37 landscape. Ultimately, I I, I still really like Garnacho as a pick. I think he's just going to be perfect. So for me, it's just a bit of a toss up. Like, do you prefer? some of the short-term value that you're going to get from Sarabia, who has some short-term fixtures like a West Ham at home, a Burnley away, uh, even, for example, Luton at home in Gaming 35, which obviously is a post-Huang coming back landscape, but of course he could very well still be a part of that sort of um, upfront trident with Wolves. Keep in mind that Bellegarde, of course, can take minutes away from Sarabia, mm. and that would be probably the only impact, right? Um Whereas obviously with Garnacho, it's like basically after gaming, I mean, including gaming 34, you just got a perfect run of games uh, with this young guy. And I think he's probably going to play up until the end of the season. So no worries there. 
those are my thoughts in terms of the penalties, right? penalties, penalties is yeah the one thing that's it that is a huge thing and i i think yeah. it's do you know do you happen to know the split of pen share between sarabi and other potential contenders within this wolves team oh so now that wang is out i suspect it is almost like close to one for sarabia yeah but the only thing the only thing i'd say so i remember Sar uh, sarabia took a penalty versus you guys actually uh when united won 4-3 and Sarabia took a penalty whilst Kunha was on the pitch. But also keep in mind that Kunha took a penalty when um, when he was playing versus Chelsea. So Yeah, and Sarabia was sort of out of favor in, the, in that time frame. So we don't even know what... Uh, what yeah, exactly. I think if... Is. I mean, that was the game where Wolves obviously won 4-2, yeah. uh, which was massive. Like Sar and, and also, I think Kunha was going to get his, uh, his hat-trick. And I, I think, think Sarabia was off the pitch. So... Yeah. That, that is an interesting thing in terms of also sometimes I think the penalty order can change though as well, like depending on who's in priority, I guess. And, and if Kunha is a 90 minute player, there are instances where obviously there would be some pen share for Kunha no matter what. But Sarabia, seeing as he's probably going to get good minutes, you know, in the short term, I, I think it's it's tough to sort of believe that um, Sarabia is off of penalties. I'd probably say it's 90, 10, something like that. Um mm. Unless, you know, Gary O'Neill has sort of okayed, or let's say Kunha draws a penalty and he really wants to take it, maybe Sarabia defers, which I think is possible. Um, these kind of situations do happen. But I, I think, I, I imagine Review probably has it very close to Sarabia, 100%. Yeah. And yeah. they both run very similarly as picks. So I think going towards the end of the season, um, you're seeing both Garnacho and Sarabia have very close sort of uh, expected sort of projections in terms of points. And the only sort of defining factors, of course, is that Sarabi has two really tough fixtures at the end of the season, which is going to be City and Liverpool. So it kind of speaks to, once again, Sarabi a better short term, maybe Garnacho a little bit better medium to long term. So I think if someone who's pl planning for a little bit long term, I, I think you, you do kind of have to go Garnacho. And for some people as well who are very tight on budget, you probably have to go for both. Uh, because if you want to, let's say, go for a more expensive forward like a Darwin, um, then it would make sense to go for for both options, but that also probably means between you know Salah, Son, Palmer, Saka, you're losing one of those players as well. So there's a bit of a trade off right now that a lot of managers have to think about um, from that point point of view. And it's not just six mins; it's just structurally also what you want to do, like how you want to play out gaming thirty four, how you want to play out gaming thirty seven, things like that. Yeah, because I'm on free thirty four, I think I'm definitely going for Garnacho. Yeah. When I'm going for Garnacho is a different issue because, uh, mm, as you pointed out, yeah. these fixtures are great. From but you now missed the Sheffield fixture, so you can wait, exactly, basically. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So Burnley is, I think, game week 35, if I'm not wrong. So that could be the fixture where I get him. Uh, but it, I think it all depends, as you said, on which midfielder I want to lose and uh, how I'll change my midfield because I need I need to carry either Saka or Salah into the bench boost. I think that's almost inevitable for my team. So I'm not going to have 15 double game weekers. I will have some single game weekers in my team, and I have to decide which which one of those I need to carry. So uh, that will determine, I think, when do, I get. I mean, do you, do you think wildcard 35ers are going to go Saka and Salah less? Probably not, right? Yes, right. I mean, how would you? Or are you saying that they would use free transfers later on? Because that seems. A very not robust plan, if for a lack of better better word. As in, let's say, if you were wildcard in thirty five, you'd you'd rather just have the the full arsenal of uh, fifteen dollars, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you you roll in thirty six, and then if you, depending on what your initial team is, maybe you deal with any injuries if there are, or if mm -hmm. there are not, you just carry two transfers into thirty eight. That's fair. Yeah. Just, yeah, I, I just think that I guess is I'll, what I'll, yeah. Most... Ultimately, you've yeah. got enough picks between like Jackson, Isak, Fernandes, Madison yeah. that can yeah. carry you through until the end of the season, and that's totally fine. Yeah, I, I think that's fine. You, you, more than Madison, I think Richarlison is going to be one of those who. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I think, I think, do you, do you, but do you not think Richarlison just in general might might have slightly overestimated X Men's like. Do we really think that he's going to be a consistent starter, even if he's back fit? Like, I, I'm, I'm not so sure if that's the case. Are you saying because uh, looks like the forward positions, except Son right now, seem dispensable? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I'm of that camp. I know a lot of people do like traditional center forward because obviously it seems like the team plays better at times, right? So it's like there are games where you see Son center forward and, and it just feels like nothing's being played through him. 
his hold-up play is probably not at the same level um, of Richarlison. Same with, for example, the way Richarlison drops deep to sort of, you know, claw a loose ball, things like that. I, I get that. Um, but it, it feels like we have seen enough games where, you know, Richarlison hasn't played. Obviously, that could be also related to the knock. Um, but I, I'm not that confident in Richarlison's minutes going towards the end of the season. And I'm someone who has owned Richarlison as well um, for, for quite a lot of moments within the season. I think pre-Werner, I would say. Or pre-Werner yeah, being established. Maybe I'm being... Uh... Uh, maybe I'm overestimating his minutes because I was underestimating them the last time around. Mm-hmm. So that might be playing a part in my perception of how his minutes are going to be moving forward. Because I think you make a good case where uh, Brennan Johnson and Kulusevsky and Werner between them have enough of a case to take away, let's say, a not insignificant amount of minutes away from uh, Richarlison. So yeah. you might be right, and and that would mean that perhaps Madison is uh, could be end up being the better uh, asset. Although with Madison, the I don't know why uh, I, I I'm assuming he was subbed early because, because they play he poorly. was still sort of injured. Yeah, I think a bit of both for sure. Right, one of those yeah. instances where you know you're probably not getting back into the game, mm. you just take him off because why why risk it? Um, I yeah. I don't see Madison's minutes dropping too much but i also think that you know over the course of the season like he's not a 95 minute player so no no point treating him as such um but yeah i i can still see him probably playing 80 82 minutes again um yeah something like that i think one more uh, one more uh short discussion before we move on to your plans for next week or this week yeah so uh kiwi all right a lot of people are looking at maybe getting him oh, instead of let's say another chill, uh, arsenal defender because of i don't know budget issues or something right or the fact that he's played a lot of games recently so how do you rate let's say zinchenko's impact because he has been on the bench for a couple of games for arsenal so he has been fit right but yeah also we don't know if he has been he has been fully fit or if he was benched just for, as a precaution so what where do you see this going in terms of uh kiwi or smins x wins I, mean, I think Arsenal played brilliantly with Kirior, so that's probably something that comes into it. But yes. I think we've also seen the Kirior Zinchenko substitution in both the games that I remember recently. So, for example, the Porto game, uh, as well as the Brentford game. So, the only concern that I have is, um, I, I I think it's a little bit too short sighted to just go Kirior. Um, yeah, I, I think I think Zinchenko. I mean, there will be a game, and we've seen it happen a couple times a season, right? Let's say if someone's playing poorly, maybe Kiwara plays slightly poorly. If you've got Zinchenko on the bench, even I think Tomiyasu is, he might be back. Um, so that's going to have a, that's going to make me very fearful of Kiwara's minute. So I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch that at all. Um, yeah, and the whole point of, you know, owning an Arsenal pick really is that you just know that they have a lot of permanence and that you don't want to touch them. I, I get the whole point about saving money, but it's like, it's, it's one of those teams where you probably don't want to Cut around the edges with, or cut around corners with. So yeah, I I'd pro- I I haven't thought about it at all. Yeah, I think I'm with you there. I just don't think he's a viable asset uh, this season. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, I think that's it for Expense Corner. Plans. Yeah, we can just discuss my plans. So interesting. Obviously, these are generic plans for me. Um, the first line of plans, uh, and for podcast listeners, is is um, you know, I only have one free transfer because I I've come from free at twenty nine. Therefore, obviously. Only one free transfer gave me 30. And the, the first set of plans um, are my options if I was to, let's say, um, exclude certain players and after the uh, expense adjustments that I've personally made. So it's uh, in Gaming 30 to go from Senesi to Gusto uh, and then Doughty to Pedro Porro. And then in Gaming 31 to do Fernandes to Salah, Watkins to Kunha, or alternatively, um, a path where this, you know, is basically... In, in in you know seeking Darwin really, uh, Senesi to Gusto, Fernandes to Salah um, on gaming thirty one, and so therefore not doing the Doughty to Pedro Porro minus four on gaming thirty in this transfer here, but instead doing a minus eight for Darwin because I can't afford Salah and Darwin outright. I have to take out Pedro Neto as well, who has haunted my team um, for a few weeks now and needs to go for Sarabia or you know maybe alternatively Garnacho if I choose to make that choice. Um, so Salah, Sarabia, Darwin in for Fernand Neto and Watkins on a minus eight for gaming 31. The, the only alternative would be, let's say, 
I think there is a concern around Darwin and his minutes, and we'll talk about that in a second. And so the, the third sort of transfer route that I have is um, Senesi to Virgil. So that would sort of lock me into, I think, a very safe Liverpool defender. That's what we can say. So the alternative to Bradley, of course, where you're looking at maybe dicey minutes um, in the short to medium term and someone who's obviously got a lot more permanence in Virgil. And then the same sort of minus eight, but this time uh, for Kunha. So uh, Fernandes to Salah, Neto to Sarabia and Watkins to Kunha, because unfortunately Virgil is a lot more expensive than, you know, your Gustos and Bradleys of the world. So generally speaking, um, I think that what I have to be dealing with as someone who's navigating, you know, with chipless really up until bench boost 37 is I have to answer the question of, you know, whether I, I really take into account the value of, let's say, Darwin um, and maybe also just the generic idea of going for someone who's a little bit cheaper like Gusto or even a Bradley, who I think a lot of people might be looking at alternatively at the same price and then thinking about, you know, what the upside is for going for Darwin over Kunha. Because un unfortunately, I think with the way the fixtures have fallen, you, you are really gearing towards someone who's playing Gaming 34. Now, previously, we thought that that could be Jao Pedro, but that's closed off now. So it's really between Darwin and Kunha for me. And going back to our discussion about penalties, I don't think Kunha is the penalty taker. And I also think Sarabia is going to be playing a lot of the minutes where, you know, Kunha <laughs> would be waiting to take penalties, um, you know, after he comes off. So because of those impacts, I, I think there is um, a lot of upside with Darwin too, because one thing that we can say about review is that I think it's it, it feels like there has been a small pricing in of the the yellow card situation with Darwin. Um, yeah. You can talk about that in a moment. But then there's also the impact of, you know, Jota is coming back and potentially for gaming 34, Darwin might not be as great a pick as we would have thought. Because there are, of course, instances where I think when we watch Liverpool and we like, you know, what Liverpool has provided, there are still many instances where Gakpo inevitably actually plays a lot of the games that we probably don't expect him to play despite us thinking Darwin's clearly first choice. And he is. But when you look at a game like Arsenal, for example, when Liverpool absolutely needed to win that game um, or do their best in it, you know, Darwin was benched there. And there was also the small sort of knock situation as well um, that I might preface. But that always seems to be something that Darwin is facing this season anyways, right? He's always been in and around knocks, basically. So that's the context right now. A lot of transfers to think about. And it really pertains to the same players that we've discussed um, and it involves a lot of hits as well, which I think is fine because a lot of people took hits, you know, when I was wildcarding in around those weeks. I also have two injuries that unfortunately the rest of the field doesn't, and I just have to navigate them with uh, with hits. So I don't know. Do you have any thoughts in terms of uh, the transfers that I'm sort of g generally showing? I think the transfers you have planned uh, are quite robust. Uh, also because you're targeting essentially game weeks after 35 for the real EV to come into the picture. Obviously with yep. Poro, we've discussed this off air, but for anyone wondering what Poro's expected value is this week, it's only it's lower insane. than it's insane. four strikers and four midfielders. Yeah. And this doesn't happen game. often. Even when Arsenal have, an, have, a, have a ludicrously good yeah. game, you do not see an Arsenal defender at a similar sort of expected value as one of the best attackers within the week. So... Yeah. The fact that it's, so Poro for context has the same EV I think as Solanke, which is quite mad. Point one uh, more than Solanke, mm -hmm. even though Solanke is on ninety-one minutes. Yeah, so yeah. That just shows you how good of an option Poro is this week. Mm -hmm. And coming back to Darwin's point, uh, for anyone wondering or not in the know, Darwin is on eight yellow cards, so he has to not get booked twice in the next four games. Otherwise, he is suspended for two games after his tenth yellow card. So that's the only reason why the decay in his x means is sort of weird where till he completes 32 games, it's a little aggressive. And then after 32 games, no one cares. Yeah, that's pretty flat, because... isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So I again, this is maybe this is not uh, how, how should I say it's not quantifiable as, as a doubt. Like I can't point to a certain event and say, OK, look, this event makes me doubt it. But I just feel like the number of options that Liverpool has always makes me a little skeptical on how many minutes Darwin is going to get. I, I don't think there's any doubt that he is going to start. I just always think that because of the number of options they have, how early of a sub could he be is the question that always comes to my mind. Because look, if you want the full expected value out of Darwin, you need him to play as, as many minutes as he can against Sheffield United. 
that is the majority of his uh, EV gain that you will get. And of course, there are weeks around that and the double game week itself. But if you, like, for example, uh, I'm speaking about Sheffield United because that's when Fran is looking at bringing him in, if yeah, he does. Yeah, precisely. So I guess one of the uh, conditions on Fran bringing him in is that he should not be, he, sh- he should not get booked against Brighton, right? Because if he does not get book- booked against Brighton, he needs to be yellow carded twice in three games uh, and yellow carded twice in, in separate games. So the red card will not just nullify whatever yellow cards he accrues. So I guess that that would pretty much lock him in, right? Or would make him that much more likely to be a transfer in for your team. Yeah, no, it's a fair point. Obviously, pretty short turnaround too. So Sunday, Thursday, Sunday are, are the games yeah. that Liverpool will play. So especially since that United game seems pretty big, um, I will say, it is a bit concerning to me thinking about, you know, how how good really is... Um, Darwin's minutes going to be for Sheffield United. So I think I think you you raise a good point there. And so obviously when you look at a lot of my transfer options, it's like either I I, I go quite aggressively for Darwin, you know, expecting to 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 gain a lot from that Sheffield United fixture, or I can get something that feels a little bit more safe through Kunha. And I think you know Kunha's minutes going to be very good. So are Poro's minutes as well, right? So for example, when you look at both the transfer pass, you know, towards the left-hand side, which is that sort of Gusto plus Poro minus four hit for this week, just because unfortunately I have Sinesi, uh, and I don't really want to play Gabriel if I if I don't have to um, versus Man City this week. It, it does seem to make sense that maybe I can just trust in uh, the short-term value of what would be, you know, Kunha's minutes, and then also Pedro Poro, who would be really, really good for me on Gaming 37. So that's something that I probably need to think about. And so, sometimes I think... It, it, and you remind me as well, like when I did the move Watkins to Darwin, when Watkins had a small little injury doubt, if you guys, rem- if you remember, um, that was also targeting Sheffield United, but the reverse yes. fixture was the away fixture and Darwin didn't start. Uh, and I think a lot of us did not get the chance to take a victory lap for doing that transfer because it looked very stupid in hindsight. Um, and yeah, I'm sort of reminded of that situation. I feel like these, this is very, very well could happen again. Now it could very well happen that maybe Salah has reduced minutes, but I think I'd, I'm much more confident in Salah just getting minutes because he's always been a bit more of an Iron Man than um, Darwin has, at least within their Liverpool career so far. So, yeah, I definitely think I, I might lean towards that Pedro Porro hit. And that's that's mm. mainly because that Pedro Porro transfer just feels so good for this week. And my defense looks so bad, <laughs> to say the least. So, before, before we move on to captaincy, I'm just going to briefly mention what I have targeted. So... I have two free transfers, unlike Fran, yeah. and my moves are going to be Bowen to Salah mm-hmm. and Barkley to Palmer, because I decided to transfer out the probably one of the best FPL assets we've had in years for for Ross Barkley, for Ross Barkley which, yeah. which is not that grim because he did score a goal, mm-hmm. but now I have to reverse it all over again. And you and, got those appearance points, right? Free at 29. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I mean, okay. not free at 29, but... <laughs> You know, even with that free 29, he uh, sorry, not that free 29, the game with 29 points, he still ended up with a lower score than Palmer in 28, right? Yeah, no, I know. So that's tough. Yeah. I think it, it reminds me of when I, I mean, when yeah. when I went for Tony over Solanke, maybe on my wild card, and sometimes it's but like... Did you, did you get an extra game? So I'm saying that... Barclay, no, I, I didn't get an extra game, game no. But I mean, technically, yeah, Barclay, if you consider, yeah. let's say, a game versus Man City to, to be a blank, you know? Oh, yeah. Ar- fair. Arguably, okay. yeah. No, I'm kidding. Okay, but... because, yeah. Three games of Barkley are not even are less than one game of Palmer. Now I've learned my lesson. Now, yeah. <laughs> no, nah, of course not. That's just a joke. Because obviously, I think the reality in FPL too is that yeah, I think playing with analytics, you get a little bit more feel for what what are the game weeks where I can sort of bypass an amazing player like a Palmer or you know set up a plan to get Salah from Bowen, right? Like. That's an amazing transfer. And I think in hindsight, it looks really good now, the position you're in. You've got free at 34 um, in your back pocket, maybe a later free hit if you really want to do so. Um, and and yeah, I mean, you've you've come out pretty strongly and you have Salah and Palmer and you don't even have to take a hit this week. So what's your defense this week? I'm just curious. Uh, yeah, perspectively. Really bad. Yeah, okay. I, I was hoping... That's, that's yeah, why I, I, was, I, was trying to, I was trying to make myself feel yeah. a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It's Zabarni, uh, Zabarni, Gabriel and Yudogi. Okay, which is still pretty good. Still probably better than mine right now. Um, so, yeah. Not with the minus four. I think with the minus four, you have one of the best defenses this week, I think. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. And we'll see, obviously, if I do the minus four. Um, so, let's do captaincy. 
Yeah. Or actually, no, I think what we were going to do actually was going, uh, we were going to look at briefly uh, a wild card solve on review. This is for Gaming 30. Uh, was there any sort of chip plans roughly, or was it just uh, just a generic wild card? Yeah, it's a wild card 30 with no free hit mm -hmm. and no bench boost. Yeah. So the only reason for running this wild card, honestly, was uh, for a different fantasy game. I yep. just wanted to look at what options pop out in in the wild card, mm -hmm. and the only reason we are sh sort of showing this here is just for people who perhaps don't or have wild carded but want to sort of get an idea of a uh, different chip strategy, what would lead them, what the wild card uh, would lead them to, sort of. And I don't know. I mean, if you look at the choices, I still think that they are comparable to, let's say, you, could you? Uh, Convert this into bench boost thirty seven down the line with enough free transfers. Um, I'll say yes, but it's because I I think Raya and Petrovic are uh, uh, is the perfect. favorite goalkeeper yeah. combination. I think right? you would go Raya Petrovic no matter what chip yeah. strategy you're going for. So I I I think that's very robust. Uh, but I think clearly here, obviously, you've got a little bit more for preference for gaming thirty four doublers, and that's fine, right? Because you're trying to maximize in the short term value, um, yeah. and you're competing with the free hitters as well. And you're probably going to have to still take some hits to, to get towards giving 37 and bench boost there if you really wanted to off of this. Um, but I, I think maybe if you, let's say, ran with bench boost 37 on review, I would probably expect that some of your defenders would be a little bit 37 orientated. Um, maybe maybe an additional Chelsea defender potentially. Uh, just because, for example, if you look here, you've got Mikolenko, Virgil, um, and Tarkovsky as well. So like three or Gabrielle as well, so four yes. giving 34 doublers, which I think would probably Overloading lean, 34, I yeah, think. And, a little bit, yeah. Uh, you, you'd probably yeah, lean the other I, direction. Although I like Garnacho a lot. And it shows you, once again, what I was talking about between Sarabia and Garnacho, right? Because here, you're not even going for like a 3 at 34, but Garnacho seems to be potentially superior over Sarabia, but actually you have both. So yeah. it shows you how strong those two picks are and, and that they're the glue to a lot of drafts like this, um, just because they're so cheap and... and what you probably have in exchange of that is that you just have a slightly stronger front line um, as opposed to having Sun within this draft, which I think is fair. Um, you'd probably transfer in Sun in later down the line, I imagine, maybe even through Sala potentially. Um, I imagine for, for, let's say, Bench Boost 37, something like yes. that. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Uh, so I'm just going to read it out for anyone who's on listening on podcast. Oh, absolutely. So it's which uh, Raya and Goal. Uh, Poro, Virgil, Mikolenko, Tarkovsky, and Gabriel in defense. Uh, Son, Sala, Palmer, Garnacho, Sarabia in midfield. Holland, Darwin, and Solanke. So I, I, I guess there would be, I would make maybe three changes if you were to bench boost in 37, as Fran already discussed, a couple of changes in defense. And I would change the forward line. I would go for uh, maybe Isaac over Darwin. Although that's sort of debatable, if you want to take full advantage of the uh, double game with 34, I think you could very well start I think with yeah, you have to book that transfer almost. Yeah. Because they're yeah. the same price. Fair. You, you fair. take that 34 first, I think. Yeah. Fair. Yeah, fair. And as I discussed, and as, as I mentioned earlier, you know, Isaac, we don't even know what the fitness situation is going to be when 37 that's comes true. around. So yeah. it also insulates you uh, from uh, making that decision right now. Mm. Yeah, hear you there. I cool. think we can move on to captaincy, right? Yeah. I think also just to touch on this as well, like I think this is a, a good sort of illustrative draft of if someone, let's say, is just gener generally or sorry, generally planning their transfers and their chip list, you know, for the season with mm. the exception to bench boost, like what mm. a sort of team you'd be looking at right now. And I think the picks that you're sort of looking at now are these picks like Pedro Poro, who will double in 37, um, you know, despite having tough fixtures, quote unquote. Uh, picks like, let's say, um, your Sarabias and Garnacho feel like really safe transfers because, once again, they're, they're, there's just no other FPL players at that sort of price point that provide that value. Uh, once again, Arsenal, triple, triple, I mean, actually a double up of Arsenal, sorry. No Saka in this draft. I am at, is there a books transfer for Saka? Just curious. Yeah, there is. There yeah, is. maybe from Son, actually, maybe in the short Son term. Saka yeah. next week, yeah. Son to Saka next week. Yeah, which I think is is also partly because Richarlison's not here, right? I th I've seen some drafts where if, let's say, Richarlison was an, ex uh, an actual pick of consideration, you'd probably have Richarlison to Saka as a book transfer, and you'd probably want to keep Son. Uh, but I think going out of Sun makes a lot of sense because ultimately you have to do so in Gaming 34 as someone who doesn't have a chip. So 
that's what I'd probably say. And then Darwin Solanke, you can see the preference for, once again, 34 doublers. And I feel like one thing that we have to look at, too, is particularly if you're bench boosting on 37, is generally the, the way you manage your transfers is you probably gear a little bit more towards giving 34 than most. Um, and then you just book those transfers in. Uh, for whatever hits you need to do to get a good gaming 37 bench boost squad out and if it takes you a minus eight so be it because ultimately you're probably going to get more value from that with your bench um because there are just that many amount of doubles and there's a lot of good players still who you'd have singling so for example if you keep selling your team it's still going to be a very good pick up until the end of the season that's pretty much it uh, but let's move on to captaincy so the captaincy options in in sort of order, I think even if you have like maximized minutes for all players, um, Sun first, then Salah, then Palmer. In terms of fixture, I think you'd, you'd say Sun's fixture is the best, then Palmer's. Uh, but Salah is Salah, of course, and, and we always have to say that. And and I think Sun and, Sun and Salah truly run a lot closer to each other um, than, let's say, Palmer's. Palmer's quite far, in a way, the, the third uh, piece in this sort of captaincy order here. Do you have any thoughts in terms of why Palmer might not be as close to a Sun and Salah? Because I think Palmer's, you know, when people look at points, obviously, and, and the holes that Palmer has gotten, they'd probably think he's up there already, right? Like performing at that sort of level. Um, even his underlying stats, you know, are, are very, very good. Not Salah-like uh, per se, but he's a penalty taker, of course. And maybe, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. I... I just think that, okay, so first of all, because all three of them play at home, we can't even play yep. for this an away tax. True. I just think it's, it's it, one of the reasons is a lack of historical underlines. And that will Got always you. play a part. You, yeah. you can never separate uh, that element fr uh, from the uh, analytics or, or if you want to uh, play with data projections, because Son and Salah have so many seasons of uh, Premier League history in terms of underlines that yeah. uh, Palmer will need to uh, register, let's say, a couple of seasons of good underlines, and he no doubt he is on his way. Uh, and uh, it, I think there's a there's value to you picking up early on on an asset like that, right? For example, people that got him on a wild card, uh, gave him ten wild card, and never sold him after that point, clearly benefited from that because. I think uh, majority of the public took a long time to get on to Palmer as, let's say, a, a nailed asset who they yeah, play with. Or, or a pen merchant, hey? <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. And uh, someone like you who's captained him multiple times going against the crowd as well mm -hmm. is exactly something which also reassures you that, okay, when it is actually as close as review suggests it is, you can really take a chance. Yeah, and that's why it's important to point out that this is not one of those weeks. <laughs> Son and Salah are actually clear in terms of captaincy uh, from an EV perspective. I think I will be captaining Son. Uh, I think you will be as well if you. I mean, you don't plan on buying Salah this week from what I've seen. So uh, both of us will be captaining Son, I guess. Mm. Yeah, I'm. I'm captaining Son. I think it's a lot closer closer on review than market. So I, uh, as far as I understand. It's pretty close, uh, but then also I think there's there might be a late adjustment because of the Richarlison news, right? If, if that means yeah. more minutes at center forward for Sun, uh, that probably tilts Sun a little bit more in favor of Salah once again. And ultimately, I just think, you know, we've been watching Luton this season and, you know, their attack has improved, but their defense have, has gotten worse and worse. And they also have just a ridiculously a injuries, yeah. long injury list. It's it, it is all sort of going in favor of Sun, unless you, let's say, watch Lewis Dunk in the international performances oh, and think, no, yeah, I'm, just, I'm just joking, no. I'm just joking. I won't go there. But um, um, yeah, I, I think it's, it's for me, it feels like it, it's pretty clearly on Sun. And, and once you have a gap that big as well on review and market, I just feel like it's so hard to, to go against that, particularly when all the sort of grass type reasons still f lie in favor with Sun, right? Um, I've oh, targeted Luton plenty of times warning. this season too. Yeah, just a fair warning to anyone listening. Yeah. I've captained Son three times this season <laughs> against Sheffield United, Luton, yeah. and I forgot who, uh, Fulham, of mm. course, last week. Yeah. And he scored two, three, and two points, respectively. So, That's fair. Uh, just a fair warning. Don't, <laughs> don't come to me if team blanks again, which seems inevitable at this point. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, should we take uh, the chat questions? Yeah, absolutely. I think we can start from the top. So, um, Priyansh yeah, is, is going uh, for yeah. bench boost 31. He's he's one of the few managers. That I think, obviously, he went free at 29. He's got a little bit more Liverpool than most. Um, so, 
one of the well one of the few lucky managers who could probably consider an alternative to bench boost 37 let's be honest um so i i would say that's awesome so i hope that pays off and I'm, I'm keen to see how that sort of pans out for you if, if you do do so um pablo says thoughts on city's defense and bradley's x means we've discussed bradley yeah. i think bradley's actually Jimmy. quite interesting right i mean at the end yeah. of the day but yeah city's defense look uh long and short is i've banned all city defenders on my solves because all of almost all of them are back fit i know stones got injured but and right. walker is all sorted out but i i just don't trust city defense especially when champions league uh, is in let's say in the high stakes stage of of the tournament i i just don't trust any of their minutes That's if fair. walker were fit i think there's a conversation to be had with walker but other than that i'm 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 staring clear yeah, whilst you're, you guys are all here in the chat, and, and 35 of you are, which I think is a, is a record high for us, so thank you guys so much for joining. Yeah, um, do thanks. feel free to, to like, subscribe, and obviously continue to drop comments. We'll continue to answer questions. Um, David's question is, good morning from New Zealand. So thank you so much for listening. Yeah, um, must be, is it, is it, is it, it must be pretty early in the morning now, um, or yeah. it might be very late, but um, I have no chips left, unfortunately, he says. Can you please help with five or six players to get for the remainder of the season, given your situation? Yeah, absolutely. I think, once again, we talked about it. Uh, Garnacho's a good pick. Uh, I think Gusto is risky, but I think potentially a good pick uh, longer term. In the short term, though, once again, Sarabi, I think, is, is a very good glue player, just because he should allow you to get your Salas and potentially Darwin's slash Kunha's of the world. Um, so those are good picks. And, and obviously, I think if you sort of listen back to my discussion about my own transfers, I think that gives you a little bit of a flavor for, you know, someone else who's navigating very similarly to you on, on that sort of path. So I think hopefully that answers your question. Um, yeah. Mo Mohin mm -hmm. says, bench Alex Moreno or Burn this week? I think Moreno, right? Because we don't even know if he's going to start for sure. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, it is a very nice fixture. Um, it is. But it I, is. yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's pretty close. Yeah. Burn can always jam some points, right? I think, and Burn will start. So, um, yes. yeah, I would probably go with Burn to be fair. Yeah. You want to take the next one? Uh, yeah. Eddie Casey says, "Hi, friend. Who to bench Saka or Foden to play Garnacho? I do think you should bench Saka personally, right? Worst fixture on paper here. He's the away player. Um, small, small, small sort of doubt in terms of his availability, which I don't think is true at all. I think even if you, um you know, looked at all these players as 95 minute players. And maybe let's say even, even let's say um, your Garnacho who would only play 80 minutes. I still think Saka is worth benching because he's probably going to be the highest owned pick. Um, mm -hmm. And he has the least sort of, he, I mean, he, he has the lowest ceiling, I would say, out of all of these players. And I would take that chance to, to sort of get some risk, free risk. Yeah. Priyan says, uh, Richarlison's X-Men's are optimistic on the review. It's unlikely Ange will move Son out to left wing again. Yeah, yeah fair. I, I kind of generally agree. That's, what, that's yeah, my, my position yeah. of it. I, I think we'll see games where obviously you're going to see, you know, Richarlison 10, 15 minutes and, and who knows, it, it might last a game or two. But even early in the season, we saw, you know, Sun basically move back into center forward and, and, and Richarlison deputize a bit more, right? So I'm failing to believe that Richarlison suddenly just going to hog crazy center forward minutes and, and, and even start every single game. I, I think it's ludicrous, in fact. But yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Omar M says, you think Neto is going to keep starting for Bournemouth? Tough one there. Um, I don't know. I mean, it really just depends on his performances, right? We, we just have to keep he watching. He is the club captain, right? So uh, He is. I just think it's that much more difficult when you are the club yeah. captain. Although we've seen the way Mourinho treated Iker Casillas. So, <laughs> I don't know. I mean... This yeah, but apparently Casillas game. was a mole. And, and, which, yeah. which was proven to be true, by the way. But... um. Oh, okay. I, I, so he was uh, he was pulling a Dean Henderson then. That's okay. That's... No, but on on a serious note, I will say the thing with Neto, I would um is that you know I wouldn't I wouldn't plan around Neto losing his spot. Um, you know, you you yeah. I think with, with yeah. these situations, particularly with the goalkeepers, right? Like at the end of the day, if you don't have a keeper, it's always going to be worth that minus four to take him out. So you know, just deal with that eventuality when it comes. Don't even think about it. It's not really worth yeah, your time. React to it. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Priyan says, yeah, he might be a ban. I'm I'm assuming he's talking about Richarlison. Yeah, not... yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah. Neto, but yeah, I mean, Neto should also be a ban. I think Ederson, also... do you think he's back this week? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't really matter whether yeah, he he's trained, back this week, trained. right? He trained, yeah, he okay. Because yeah. uh, yeah. I know he was in, in Portugal on vacation with his uh with his wife or partner. But um yeah, yeah I mean, look, I think the, the, the reality with Ederson is that he's probably going to start all the games even after this Arsenal game if, if he really can't make it for this one. 
which he probably will. And ultimately, you don't really want to start Richal, uh, sorry, Ederson on this fixture anyway. So, yeah, I think Ederson's good to go. But actually, he's still expensive, and Petrovic mm. has more fixtures. So, I don't know. I uh, think Petrovic is a shoe in Yeah, I'm a Petrovic fan. Petrovic. I wouldn't be thinking yeah. about Ederson at all, is, is basically my yeah. point. Fatality, is that named after the legendary um, FPS player? <laughs> Um, evening all says um, Odegaard to Salah and Watkins to Mateta for minus four worth it or roll I I think it's worth it actually because Odegaard this is not a good fixture for him um, I don't love the Mateta fixture it is not going to force away I believe but ultimately you lose Watkins but you probably gain Salah which I think could be worth it um, over the next two weeks I think we've discussed although with Mateta that he we don't even know if this is going to he's start consistently games starting games yeah before, right? so, that's a good point I mean I, I'd probably prefer yeah. Akunha obviously if, if you had to go there yeah. but the thing is you don't even know Akunha starts this week so you probably want to wait okay. for an update from Gary O'Neill if you can go Akunha if you can go Muniz I actually might prefer him over Mateta Fair uh, enough. yeah I don't know Fair I think enough. that's sort of my position but generally I think if you can go Salah and just because Odegaard's not a great pick this week I know you lose Watkins but I think the flip side of the coin, yeah, this is a really bad Odegaard fixture. So it's like I would be gaining a lot more than Salah anyways through this. And obviously the captaincy next week too, priced in. So I, I think it is worth a, a general transfer. Yeah. The next one, probably you might have to think it through. Yeah, that's fine, yeah. Two free transfers, uh, K9 says, Bailey to Salah and roll second free transfer game week 31, Watkins to Holland and Madison to Garnacho or game week 31, Sinasi Gusto plus Bailey to Salah. Uh, I, I think bring Holland 32. I I personally think that you can wait till Gaming 33 to bring Holland in, right? Um Gaming 32 is not Well, actually Gaming 30 yeah, Gaming 31 is still Aston Villa and the Gaming 32 is still a slightly roughish fixture for Holland. 33 is definitely the big one. I think yeah, you can wait till 32. Yeah, yeah, I mean I I generally I don't really know the state of your defense, but I think if Gusto is one of your he considerations. Says his defense is uh, 2 into Arsenal plus Doughty plus NSC plus Regulon. Oh, absolutely. I would take. I would. I would spend those two free transfers because you just don't have a competent third defender, just like myself. Mm. So I would take that chance yeah. easily. Yeah. Uh, Marcus says. So that's his whole team. I, I won't read out the whole team, but um, yeah. would I start Doughty? No, honestly, I'd probably take a hit and not oh, start him. No, no, no. Yeah. Is so, so trash. Generally worth the hit in these situations. Like it's. <laughs> it's uh, you do not want to be playing Doughty. I would say, probably, probably not. Yeah. Less than two EV. When you're like an 80 minute player and supposed to be one of like the one of the most attacking left backs, yeah, in the, in the league, wow, that's yeah, what is it, 1.4? Not looking 1. good, 8, huh? 1.8, I think, 1.8, I checked. Fair, fair, yeah, yeah, 1.6, actually, think, yeah. My do God. we have any other more charts? I think, yeah, that's, I think that's, um, I think that's it, yeah. So, I know we just we said it's going to be a shorter one, but we still ended up streaming for an hour. I think we we just we, we have just love streaming. To, yeah, we've just gotten <laughs> habituated to talking about yeah. FPL. So I, I think uh, th this is a nice week because you know th this is the week that is sort of the bedrock of your future transfers for the next two three weeks. So we might actually miss out yeah. an episode in the future, but at least we've, say, we've so discussed most of the transfers in the short term. Yeah. We won't be streaming in thirty one for sure. I think right. Yeah. It's what we've discussed so we'll be back in 32 which means that you can treat this as a 30 minute part this week and 30 minute part next week if you yeah if you choose to do so i think generally too like a lot of people's gaming 31 transfers it's like you 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 either miss the boat on salah this week and you're just going for salah anyways later on um or for example you actually want a little bit more information on on your darwins and your kunhas of the world and therefore you're waiting for 31 for the same reason right uh, or, or a different reason but you're making the same transfers so yeah i think Ultimately, 30 31 chances are very similar. And then 32 33, we'll be back to tell you, you know, which Everton defender to pick, um, which I think yeah. is a as interesting as it gets, really. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's uh, FPL for, for this week for Game Week 30. So thank you guys so much for joining the Game Week 30 preview. Once again, uh, do feel free to like and subscribe. It really does help uh, grow the channel. For the people listening on podcasts, do feel free to give a five star rating. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful Game Week going ahead. Take care and goodbye. Have a good one, guys. Bye.